All right, guys, wanted to show a little bit of the grill here and the grill tie bar and all the pieces. Uh, there's a ton of details just in the grill and the parts that go with it. So I just wanted to show that. It is 27 degrees outside today and it is snowing. So I'm not going to be able to paint my deck lid today. I have decided just to work on little parts in my house and stay warm. So that's what I'm doing. I had the grill in a box. The grill surround was in a box. Uh, I had the grill tie bar and these three, these other two parts for the latch on a shelf. So I decided I'd kind of put everything together and then it'd be just one unit instead of a bunch. So starting out, this is a reproduction Dan Chuck Chrome Grill. Now this is their old one. This is their first series. For, it's my understanding that they, they've got all new tooling for their 55 grills now. So this is the old one. Uh, this thing, I bought it back in probably 2012, 2013, somewhere in there. I wanted stainless steel so bad. They have a stainless steel grill and they have a chrome grill. The chrome grills will rust, especially if they have water left on them or if you leave your car outside, they are going to rust, especially in the edges. I got my cousin's reproduction grill from his 55 and it, it's really rusty. So... I wanted stainless steel, I just couldn't afford it. It's ridiculously priced. But anyway, this is their first design, just chrome plated grill. Now, when I went to bolt this into the car, I ran into an issue and boy was I mad. And then I, I found out on the forum that everybody has the same, pretty much the same issue with this grill. Now, I have original inner fenders that never had any accident damage, same way with the front fenders and the front splash apron. Everything that attaches to this had never been in an accident, so it should have lined up really nice, and it didn't. All of these holes where this mounts, I had to open them up, oval them out. You can see some of these, how, how far out oval they are. I mean, that is insane. Now, it's not so bad when you oval the hole out. What really sucked was when you went to put your bolts in there, you had some of these at the edge, you could see the hole, you could see the slot. So you would know by looking in there that you that was an ovaled out hole. So I was pretty upset. My idea was I'll just put bigger washers on and it'll cover up the whole hole. The problem was the washer stuck out past the grill here. So that wasn't going to work. And then I thought, well, maybe I should go down and grind the washer off to where it fits. And it just turned into a fiasco trying to cover up slotted holes. So what I ended up doing was I went to my local Ace Hardware and I bought some shim stock, some stainless steel shim stock. And I bought a stick of it and I cut them all to fit. And you can see the offset hole in that. I have these numbered. This is number three. I have them numbered from driver's side over, one, two, three, four, so on. Now, everywhere a bolt goes in this, you can tell this is square punched it, it's like a square indent in the grill part right there so I cut these to fit perfectly down inside that square cutout so it basically disappears it, it will be a washer but you can't tell it it looks like it's part of the grill so that's what I come up with to, to remedy that issue so I bought all new chrome grill surround with hood bar and everything also from Dan Chuck uh, really impressed with the, the quality of this. This really nice parts. They come with studs that are way longer than mine, and they're CAD plated. Now me, the theme on the car is stainless steel everything on the hardware. I'm a hardware guy. I like that stuff stainless when I can get it in there. So I ended up buying, I believe this is 1024 is the thread size. I bought a piece of all thread and stainless steel and I polished it and then I cut them down from the factory length the ones that came with it it seemed like they're really really long and I did it a little bit less so there's not so much stud hanging out and I polished what I ended up doing is everywhere I cut them cut these studs out I sanded all the edges or the face side of it down and I rolled the edges a little bit and then I polished it again on the polishing wheel so it has a really nice instead of just being lopped off and have you know cut marks they're really nice ends on it. And I've done it to the hood bar and the sides and everything. I even done it to the hood bird. The hood bird has the studs the same way. So I've got stainless steel regular nuts, lock washers, and flat washers. And I buffed all of those on my polishing wheel as well. And that was not fun. That was a lot of a mess. What I ended up doing was I took a piece of... Uh, 
that stainless steel all thread I had and I put everything on the stainless steel all thread just kind of loosely and I put my I had welding gloves on and I held on to each end of that all thread so the nuts and washers and everything they wouldn't fly off and I just kept running on the buffer now the buffering wheel will spin that stuff but it's it it polished it as well so you didn't have to sit there when I first started I was trying to hold each piece on you know the washers uh, by hand and you just can't you couldn't do it they just fly out of your hand they get so hot you can't hold on to them the nuts aren't so bad because you can put them on all thread and polish each one I think that's what I did to the nuts but you get the idea so I wanted to show off a little bit of detail on this thing and you know what I wanted to do originally besides getting a stainless steel grill I would love to have one I just can't afford one the price is ridiculous if I came into a lot of money, I would probably buy a stainless steel grill for this car, and then I would put this one in my wife's four-door. But I don't know what the grill prices are now. Back when I bought this grill in 2012 or 13, I think it was 259 bucks or 239 I don't remember. But what I did was I bought uh, a chrome hood latch plate here. And the reason I did is if, if you guys... If you're on your first 55, you're going to run into this. If you're going to paint your original, like spray paint or whatever, it always chunks the paint out really bad where your hood latch catch is right here. It always gets one side of it, no matter how cautious you are. It always ends up marring it. Now, when it's painted, it has a bigger area. The chrome is hard. It's harder than paint, obviously. So... For me doing all my mock-up and stuff, it has got a little spot nicked in it right here, but it's nothing like what it would be if it was paint. So what I did was I bought a chrome one, and I rounded the edges on it real nice because it just comes pretty much straight cut 90s. Well, I rounded all the edges on it, and I used vinyl 3M striping tape here, and then I blasted it with my blaster, and then I etch primed it, and then I painted it trim black. So then I pulled the tape off, and yeah, I have this little chrome little you know, square looking piece here. So it, you know, it doesn't chunk the paint. And I think it's kind of cool, but it goes with the black tie bar. The, the, just this being chrome with this being painted black, it didn't, it didn't go, you know what I mean? So I would love to have had a chrome tie bar as well, but I wanted the speed hole. So I would have had to speed hole that. And then, you know, I'd have had raw steel in everywhere. So I just ended up working my original. Now I did I Z-Chrome primed this, and then I blocked it and then painted it after I speed hold it. Now, I did chamfer the, the holes a little bit. Now, I used uh, ARP 12-point bolts to hold the grill to the tie bar. These are 12-point 1024s, I think, or 1032s, I don't remember. But I have stainless steel nylon lock nuts on the back, and then these are 12-point as well. Now, if you notice in that, there's nylon, little bitty thin nylon washers under there. I use nylon washers on a lot of my reassembly after paint on the car on lots of stuff. The trunk hinges, uh, door hinges, hood, fender, you know, everything that has painted surfaces. Because when you go in and you start adjusting stuff that's painted, like I will bolt this down and then I'll go to adjust the hood and I'll have to loosen these off to move this, you know, forward and back or side to side you'll end up getting it adjusted and you'll have an edge that the paint's chewed up on from where the bolt was originally. So if you do everything tight with nylon lock washer or nylon flat washers like that, it won't tear the paint up. And then once it's all adjusted and you have it where you need it, you can take the one bolt out at a time, take the nylon washer off, stick the bolt back in, tighten it tight down good, then take the other one out. And that way you don't lose your adjustment doing one bolt at a time. So... Nice little tip there for you. You can get them nylon washers at just about any parts store. I think Lowe's has them as well. So the other thing I did custom on this was these Ring Brothers hood adjustment bumpers. These are really cool parts. Uh, these things, they're kind of pricey for no bigger than they are. Now, they don't have the accurate size for this. If I remember right, it is a 1024 or a quarter by 20. I don't remember size for this tie bar. And I ended up drilling and tapping it bigger to fit these. I, I want to say these are 5 16 I can't remember. But these hood adjustment bumpers, when you buy them, they are too tall for these cars, for the Tri-5s. What I got into was it has another piece just like this. This is aluminum. It has these little speed hole things in them, which is really cool. But it has another one going the other direction on the bottom, which is your lock nut. When you put them together, when I mocked up my car, I couldn't use it because they were too tall. So what I ended up doing was buying some really tiny, thin 
uh, regular stainless steel nuts and I polished them and they actually work to lock it in place. So if you're going to run those Ring Brothers hood adjustment bumpers, you're going to have to do some work to get those. I actually have the same ones here and these actually have the nuts on them. These are not adjusted yet, but really thin stainless steel nut on there. But they just kind of give it a little bit more detail to the part. But another thing I did on this is the bracket here. I speed hold it as well. And it just kind of gives a little bit more detail, you know what I mean? I, I think I talked about that in a video. I had this done and then I went to paint some parts and I couldn't find this and it was still attached to, to the old grill. So I had to, I ended up find I did another one and speed hold it and then I found this one at a later date. So what I ended up doing was putting the other speed hold one in with the four door stuff. So I'm gonna put it on the four door and get some use out of it. But it was a lot of work just in the grill, but it's cool, man. Cause it, I mean, if you guys been following my channel long enough, you know, I'm a, I'm a detail guy. I like the, even the smallest detail that nobody's going to notice. I like that kind of stuff. More time than money. That is me. That's what my t-shirts need to say. I need to get me some t-shirts made. That's it guys. Just wanted to show that. I thought some of you guys might get a kick out of that. I did have a buddy ask me about my alternator where I got it and this is actually <laughs> this is a $40 remand from O'Reilly's and it's probably not $40 anymore because I bought this probably back in 2013 or 14. This is a remand SI10 alternator because I don't have a lot of accessory stuff on this car and I completely brought it, I brought it home took it all apart like gutted it apart to where it was bare case halves. I speed hold it, put three speed holes in each case have, and I chamfered the holes, and then I took a Scotch-Brite two-inch roll-lock disc on my 90-degree angle grinder, and I decasted the whole housing smooth, and then I Z-chromed it, sanded it, and painted it. This is the same black that's on the car. So I, at that point, went in with some silver paint and did the speed holes in silver, and then the red that I put on the, the winding stuff here that you can see i have a bunch of spray paints in my cabinet and some of some of that stuff is that touch-up paint you buy at like the parts stores and it's like color match for your car with a part number code number i don't remember what that is i don't remember if it was ford mopar or ford i don't remember what it was but it's called electric current red <laughs> so it was fitting so i spray painted it uh red and put that in there now this is a that's i have a march underdrive uh, pulley set and it's just alternator water pump and crank that's that's it so this is a twisted billet aluminum fan or cast aluminum i don't know but it's a twisted fan i just thought it was pretty cool because it was twisted but it came polished and i blasted it with my little portable blaster and then painted it etch primed it and painted it i also etch primed the the front of this and all of my pulleys, when I bought the March set, it came as polished, but it was anodized, clear-coated for protection. And I didn't want all that shiny stuff, so I ended up taping off the whole top side where the belt's going to run. I taped all that off, and then I etch-primed everything and blasted it. So, and it, well, I, etch I blasted it, etch-primed it, and then painted it the, the car paint black as well. So uh, all the pulleys are black as well, but... Anyway, these alternator case halves, if you want to try to hide your wiring, you can take your four screws out here and you can clock that, the back, anywhere for your plug-in. This is, a, it's pretty neat uh, the way you can do that. And you can see there the, the hardware in that is actually button head stainless steel Allens that I polished. I think I got them at my local Ace Hardware, but anyway, it's really, it's a neat alternator because it was, it was only like 40 or 45 bucks and it, it looks like a million bucks now you know what i mean after all that work but i didn't have to spend tons of money on a stupid alternator there are some really awesome looking alternators out there for sale but the prices are really out there in my opinion anyway just in case you wanted to know talking speed holes here so these are the fender brackets that go on the fender uh, they actually, this is where where they bolt on and your fender would bolt on here. These originally are riveted onto your car and or your fender and I ground the rivets off and I have 
uh, stainless steel Allen button heads with nylon lock nuts to bolt it back on. The reason is when you try to paint your fender with these brackets on, you get a little bit of dry spray back up under there because you can't quite get this painted. It's so close up into the edge under there. So I removed them to do that. But while I had them off, I stepped speed holes in there and I just got done putting silver paint in them. I have wiped them with some uh, paint thinner on a an old t-shirt uh, and it did leave a little residue but I'm going to wait until the paint dries and then I'll go back over again and it'll clean it off just fine but anyway it's got some speed holes in it and so when this is bolted on you will see the the silver speed holes there at the front from if you're standing at the front of the car you're going to see that I just thought it was kind of cool somebody might want to see that I did speed hold the back as well, but I didn't. I only speed hold what you would see if you got really far back there because this up under here is kind of hidden. All right, I finally got some pieces I can kind of put together. I'm going to go ahead and attach these as well. Now, I've showed this in quite a few videos, but this is the first with everything fully painted and detailed. So these are actually remnants from an upper paint divider from a 55 sedan. I had a pair here in my shed in a box. One of them was creased really bad. A car had been sideswiped. The other one had a big old crunched in spot in it. So I basically cut them to pieces and I used the top. And these have some pretty hard crowned edges. So it was really, really tough to get that curve in there like that. But it was a lot of work uh, doing that. A lot of the hammer and dolly work and, and filing. But I, I got them basically fit, and I'm going to use some 3M double-sided tape, and these will go on the, these are the rear garnish moldings that would actually go on uh, up here on the inside of the car. So the reason I did that, originally I was going to two-tone the car, and when you two-tone one of these cars, you're, when your garnish molding's on there, this rear section of the garnish molding doesn't match. It's usually painted just the one interior color, so this doesn't really go with the quarter panel. So... I didn't want to just put a tape line there or put some chrome pinstriping tape, which I've seen a lot of people do. I wanted to try something like this, and it ended up working. So it'll end up, I think it's kind of a cool feature, but I got the inlays painted. It's the same car paint as on the car, but that is a, a, a fit piece to two tone the garnish molding. Now, I do plan on two toning this car at a later date down the road when I get tired of the all black. So uh, I'll have to remove these to do the, t the two tone line on it, but. I am going to go ahead and run them for now because it's basically it'll be a continuance from the garnish molding coming up here and then going roll up, rolling right over into the interior of the car. Just another little detail I thought you guys might want to see.